don't have a, a racing family background as such. My parents are my biggest fans. They pushed me in the right directions. I went off to Europe when I was 17 years old, got my start in open wheel. I spent seven years of my life over there. I was the, pretty much the sole American over there at the time. It was pretty tough for me pretty much the whole time to prove that I was committed and really had to live, eat, and breathe motor racing. It's pretty cutthroat over there, but it did the job. I'm here racing for Grand Am, and it's just where I want to be. I really got big into watching uh, racing religiously. It was kind of right at the end of the Senna era, and then Schumacher came on board. But, you know, Mansell was always really fun to watch, especially in Indy cars. He always created a lot of action and made some awesome passes and always made a good race. But I just always kind of did my own thing. And, uh, but, you know, I always looked up to guys like Schumacher who took it professionally too. It's the up and coming series right now. Everyone's talking about, I have a lot of friends that watch racing and they're totally racing anoraks and they love watching Grand Am and the, and, and the Rolex series more than anything right now. I mean, it creates the most action, the, the best racing, and it's got a lot of big names in it. There's no slackers. You gotta be on top of your game all the time. The cars are great. I love driving them. I wasn't sure how I was gonna adapt with it. Luckily, Kelly being as good as guy as he is, and he's a great coach, he's a good mentor. He's got all the experience in the world, and it's a total team sport. You have to work together on handling of the car, uh, seat time. It's a huge part to be really closely connected with your teammate and understand what you both want out of the car and your engineer. And Kelly makes that easier with me. It was a lot of hard work, you know, we started off pretty dominant, we had a little bit of a downturn in the mid-season which lost our points lead, but we managed to keep it and went into the last race with six points and then won the last race and the championship. So thanks to Rolex, I have a nice watch sitting at home. Defending our title is a proud thing to be doing. The team and GM Racing and Pontiac are putting no less of an effort in than we ever have. We're already trying to go faster. So there's no cutbacks. Uh, we know it's gonna be tougher than ever. Porsche and Mazda are also here to get it. It's gonna be a fight. Daytona is probably the most special to me. I mean, it's, there's nothing like it. Every year I love coming back, but Watkins Glen's my favorite circuit. It's got just about everything. I mean, it's got really fast sweeping corners. It's got a lot of elevation change, some tight kind of cambered corners where you get a lot of grip, a lot of medium speed, third gear, some flat S action. It's just got a little bit of everything. This is where I think it, most people want to be right now. It's growing. It's where the big names of the industry are coming. And whether I'll stay in GT or DP, they're both good. I'm happy with either one, but you know, the future will tell. I just try to stay active. I live in Colorado now. I've been there for three years, so you know, it's a total outdoor place. We do a lot of camping, hiking. We got a lake right where we're at, so we got the jet skis and the boat, and my wife's totally into it, so I spend a lot of time with her and try to stay focused. 190 miles an hour in a Ferrari. Actually, I did 196 in an Audi in France. Passed some uh, cops on a, with a tripod. They didn't even come after me. <laughs> I drive sensible now, you know. That was like seven years ago, and I've got my fair share of speeding tickets, so I like to keep my insurance rates down.